So the last thing we'll do here on the program is we will talk power rankings. Let's mm -hmm. talk about where we rank all of these teams after week one. So this is a week one group mm -hmm. stage power ranking. What we're going to do is we're going to show you six through ten, and then we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. So Tyler, uh, as well as myself, uh, commiserated and put together a top ten list. Let's now show you six through ten. Tyler, let's talk this through. All right, so number 10 is Rogue. They're the only one or two, one and two team in my list. Uh, I think they played quite well. I think they just got unlucky of getting two of the best teams in the entire tournament in their group. Uh, that's unlucky. I think if they put them in, I think if you replace them with Fnatic in Group C or you throw them even in Group A over G2, I think there's a good chance they're two and one right now. I think they're a really good team. I think they got very, very unlucky with the draw. So Rogue at number 10. Uh, then you have the Group C clump of Fnatic, Genji, and LGD, where all three of these teams have had really good moments, but also very head scratching. So again, they're all tied two and one. So they've all had they've it's kind of been the rock paper scissors effect where one beats one, the other beats another one, then they all beat TSM because who can't beat TSM? So <laughs> I I like all three of the teams. I think all three are jockeying for, for position. And I just need to see which one or two of these teams takes the leap in the next one because I don't think any three of these teams have played at their top peak level yet. I think all three would come back into the would come back to me and be like, yeah, we we are still playing at like 70, 80 uh, percent. Some of the like, I think Fnatic had a really great game versus TSM, and I think they had a really good game today. But I also think they would look back at their LGD game and say that was a game we we really should have played better. So I think all three of these teams have higher levels to them but right now they're just in this clump can trying I, to find out who's better can i ask you one fanatic question there do you think that that now that you've seen three games mm -hmm. from them and how impressive their two victories were especially mm -hmm. today against Gen G, do you think that first game was an anomaly like do you think that we are reaching fanatic final form I think they played amazing in their first game. Their first game was versus TSM. Their second game was against LGD. Oh, sorry. Sorry, the, the one loss, I should say. My, my, my bad. Mm -hmm. Against LGD, do you think that was an anomaly? I think the first game was that they got all their comfort picks with Evelyn, and I don't think you should ever give self-made Evelyn in this tournament. So mm -hmm. that was a lot more of just like they, are, they got their win con and, and self-made didn't let them down. I think the LGD game was they let LGD scale when they picked what their comfort was and they kind of lost and had a few moments of like, they just got to a point where they just couldn't beat LGD composition. And today, Gen G kind of, uh, I don't know what Gen G was doing or thinking by having their Rakan not have flash. And then uh, Fnatic bot one just kind of killed Rakan and just kind of ended the game there where I think Gen G goes back into the, the lab and says, wow, we really threw that one. That was a really dumb decision by us. So, I think all three of these teams are in this weird position where I think they're really good. And I think they're, they are all contenders to make top eight. I just need to see which ones can rise to the occasion. And Fnatic's generally the team that goes into the lab and they, they come out into week two and just play. And they, they've adapted to what they saw versus in the first three games. And everything now is about adaptation and what you can learn from the first three games that you played and how you can kind of form your next strategy against your opponents coming up. So I have Fnatic first. I think they have been the most impressive of the three teams. And I think LGD has still been a bit shaky. So I have them at number nine. But this is this, these three teams are going to separate in week two. One of these three teams are going to bump up to the top five. Who is number five, speaking of five? So yeah, five and six is kind of interesting because it's, it's G2 and Tuning. It's a very similar situation to the Group C clump where... I think Sooning in G2, again, I think G2 looks at their performances so far and kind of like kind of grimaces. And I think they go, mm, we could have played a lot better. I think they 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 kind of stole one versus Sooning. They lost a team liquid when they shouldn't have to. Even their Machi win wasn't the cleanest. But I just still do think like when you look at just G2's team fighting and how effortlessly they can just turn around a like lost position into a, a, a thunderous victory. Not many teams at this tournament can do that. Like you just watch some of their plays and some of their coordination when when even in the games where they lost versus TL, they had some really beautiful setups with the Ash Arrow of Perks, who was ineffectic because he was just kind of pushed out lane, was never able to farm up to have any sort of items. But they had really good coordination and their team finding is one of the best in the entire world. I think you can flip flop Sooning or G2 anywhere you want. I just pick G2 because they beat Sooning. So that's mm -hmm. my only kind of like, okay, G2 beat Sooning. So I'll put them five Sooning. Six. 
the the top four teams mm. i would imagine are very like w ordering them is one thing but i see a mm. gap almost between yes. the top four teams yes. and the remainder and yes. i was going to ask you if g2 had beat team liquid today and yeah. went oh, yeah. three and oh mm. would that have broken them into the top four in your opinion yeah, if they had, if they had effort if they had dominated Team Liquid, they're probably three. If they it was a close game, probably four. Okay, so okay, now we get into the top four, and this is mm -hmm. where the gap is established, as mm -hmm. uh, we just said. Who is number four for you? Uh, number four is DRX, which you know I was pretty much I was down DRX coming into this tournament. I thought like, hey, maybe Unicorns of Love or Flecos could upend them, upset them. Uh, don't believe in Doran as a player really currently. I think he's always been a bit overhyped. He's always been just kind of like, oh, he's not Sword, so he must be better, right? Uh, he's better than Sword, but I don't think he is a world-class top winner currently. Uh, Piosic was also someone I doubted, and Piosic, as we saw on your Dream Team, has been one of the better performing junglers at World so far. Uh, his This meta fits him like a glove. All of his meta champions, including uh, his his namesake, Piosic, which means Mark in Korean, uh, right. the, is, the everything, is in, everything is in flavor of him right now. So he's he is balling out of his mind. And also, you have Chovy, who is, if you're going to have any mid laner right now in the world, he's one of the top picks. And then your bottom lane, uh, there was this, I was, I was concerned about Deft. He had, he, there was rumors and talk of a back injury that was plaguing him. And, uh, yeah, if he's having a back injury, he's showing no wear or, or sign of it. He has, he has bodied most of his opponents, not named Jackie Love. And Kyria is, you know, he still kind of misses on some of the marks, but mechanically, he's better. He's one of, if not the best, you know, support at world. So, DRX has really impressed me. Again, they are in a group with TS, who I think is the second best or first best team in worlds. So, they lost to TS in a very competitive game. So, I don't want to hold it too much against them, but I think overall, DRX is a top four, top five team. I think. It, it JDG, DRX, G2, Sooning, Fnatic, Gen.G, LGD, like that's kind of a clump in itself. I think any of those teams, depending on how they perform in week two, can like bump up or down. I think the top two is very certain for me. I think those are the top two mm. teams at, at the World Championship and everyone else is playing catch up. Well, we'll find out how you ordered them in a second. Let's get to number three. Mm. I think many people can guess what it is. Uh, JD Gaming, and I think after the first game where Damwon just kind of uh, bashed them in, like bashed their head in repeatedly and just kind of knocked them out in like 20 seconds and continually bashed them and bludgeoned them and brutalized them, that people, oh yeah, JD Gaming is bad, like, oh, there's no way they can be considered a top team. Oh uh, man, oh, uh, no, they're actually killers themselves. Like, they, they, they have destroyed PSG and then they... They handled uh, Rogue very easily, relatively easily, in their game as well. And I think it was more of Damwon is just that damn good, more so, less so than, like, JDD gaming is bad. They're really, really good. I still think they are a world's contender. If I had to put money on a team not named Top or Damwon to make the finals, it's either them or G2. Uh, Kanavi, Kanavi and, and Lumao, again, is one of those jungle... Uh, jungle uh, support pairings that just wreck havoc in this kind of meta. So I think JD is number three. It might some people might like dock it a bit, like oh man, they got destroyed by a one. But really, only two teams have really had clean group stages. Everyone else has lost. So I think that loss to Dam one is a lot more forgivable than uh, like you know G two's loss to Team Liquid or or uh, Fnatic losing to LGD. I think the, their loss to the, the damn one was a lot more forgivable than any other, you know, two and one. So you just said it, and you did say their names. There are only two undefeated mm -hmm. teams right now at the 2020 League of Legends World Championships. That is Top Esports, TES, and mm -hmm. Dam One Gaming. And we and many people had TES number one going into Worlds at ESPN.com slash esports. But... Now, Tyler, after having watched all three group games in week one, how do you order those two teams? Uh, I have Dam1 number one, TS number two. I think Dam1 is, I think, I think they're in a group level of their own, but I still think Dam1 has pulled ahead quite a bit. I've seen, it's really tough, because I think in terms of how you just view the games themselves, Dam1 has been a lot better than TS. But I also think you can say TS has been kind of toying with their opponent. They've been limit testing a lot. I don't think they've been challenging any of their games, really. 
I think they've been kind of screwing around. Like when we talk about G2 screwing around with G, of Team Liquid earlier, that's the kind of situation I think TES is in, where I think I don't think they are challenged by really anyone, even DRX. It's a lot of limit testing. It's a lot of testing out new champions. It's picking wacky things and kind of making them work. Where Damon's kind of come in and basically been like, I am going to smash everyone. I'm going to smash you in the early game. I'm going to smash you in the mid game. I'm going to smash you in the late game. If I, may, if I let you get to the late game, and they're going to play slow, they're going to play fast, they're going to play different styles. Where TES has really just been playing around with their food. And so that makes Dam1 my number one team right now. But I don't think we've seen the, the peak of either team yet. I don't think we've seen even close to the peak of TES. And with how Jackie Lowe is playing right now and in his form, alongside the rest of the players, 369 just kind of styling everyone on Jacks, going 2v1, 3v1, 4v1 on the champion. It, it really does show that TES is kind of like, they know they're the best team in their group, even if DR2, I think, is a very good team. And I think we're not going to see their real form until the quarterfinals. And I honestly do think there's a world where we have, if, if the bracket RNG, you know, gives it to us, there's actually a chance. I, I There's a chance we see a 12-0 DM1 versus a 12-0 top esports. I think these two teams are so good that if they're on the opposite side of the bracket, we might see, like, the most epic final of all time, where both of these teams come in undefeated, both looking like complete and utter like monsters, and we have this like Titanic WrestleMania have, style final. Have we ever had two undefeated teams no. meet in the final of worlds? Never. We've never really had like, a, like an epic final. Like 2016 was supposed to be that of Rocks versus SKT, but right. they got they met in the semifinal. So yes. we've never really had two like Titanic like killer like I'm just knocking everyone out. It's a lot more been like oh SKT is 15 and 0. And they are just going to go win the finals now. And there's no one that can match them or Samsung White. Or it's a more of a surprising team that comes up from the depths to kind of take over in the late game. Like, oh, IG looks, oh, they lost to Fnatic. Oh, IG's world champion. Like, we, I don't think we've ever had, like, two really dominating teams battle through the bracket to face off in the final. So I would really love it. Like, if, if NA has to go down and kind of just, like, not make quarterfinals, I think my preferred final would be that damn one TS. Keep the two teams separated. Both teams go six and zero in the uh, in the group stage, mm -hmm. and then they both decimate the quarters and semis, and we just get the like the ultimate heavyweight title fight at Pudong Stadium between the the China number one team, the South Korean number one team, like two explosive offenses as well. Like that would be a matchup. It would be the most exciting final, the most hyped up final, easily of all time. So. Uh, these two teams are my top two right now in the, in the power rankings. Uh, Damwon gets the edge, though, just because they've played more different styles so far, and they've played with a lot more restraint than TS. And TS has been a, a bit of wacky, you know, testing their limits, having a few team fights where they've lost that they probably shouldn't have. So yeah. just for that, I have to put Damwon number one right now. So now we have concluded week one. Week two will begin on Thursday, and by Sunday, we will know exactly which teams will move on to the playoffs at Worlds 2020. Tyler, before we wrap up the show here, do you have any final thoughts, whether it's from today's action or even just week one as a whole? Any final thoughts? Jackie Love is a gangster. 